Welcome back to For the Record, Jed Donahue. We've got Russ Rose, uh, four consecutive national championships. Do you get a chance, though, to personally, you know, you mentioned you love seeing the players jump all over each other for a job well done. And, but for you personally, I was just asking you, have a tendency to never look back, but you have to look back on the last four years and go, whew, how about this body of work? You got a, you got a tough act follow here, going for one for the thumb or whatever they call it anymore. Well, it sets the bar high for everybody else. I'm not going to be coaching for 32 more years. So, uh, you know, it'll be on paper something that somebody will look back on and go, boy, that must have been a great time in volleyball history. Or maybe that, you know, I mean, what, what to me makes it special is it was at a time where rally score was really being used, and, and that's one of the things I think that equalizes the disparity between teams. So yeah. we were, you know, we, we had a great collection of kids. Uh, I had a staff that uh, could keep them focused, and, uh, and, and the most important component was the university supporting the program and really giving us the opportunity to host, giving us the opportunity to travel around the country, giving us the opportunity to travel in style and such that it gave us the best chances of being healthy when we arrived as opposed to uh, you know, going in a bus and, and thinking you're going to be fine after a six or ten hour ride in a bus. So we were, you know, we were fortunate. I don't, uh, I mean, d deflect the success. I, mm -hmm. I kind of think we should share the success because really so many people really were instrumental in giving us the opportunity to, to compete for a championship. Yeah, I mean, I think about Title IX, but Penn State's track record as far as opportunities for women athletes, female student athletes, uh, is second to none. Their track record speaks for itself. But can you give us a, a bit of a history lesson when you first started at Penn State to where you are now, where you have a following? You do 5,000 for a match at Rec Hall, one of the venerable places in the country for women's volleyball, to where you've come with this whole thing. Yeah. It, it's staggering when you really sure. try and put that together well so much of it it really is as you identified you know Penn State was one of the leading schools uh, in the uh, title nine era and yet when the NCAA came along and I believe it was probably 30 years ago and started running championships for women Penn State recognized that uh, the NCAA carried a much uh, heavier uh, financial commitment to conducting championships mm -hmm. and I think that really was one of the one of the points that, that made it go for us. But over the years, it was just building, building a program slowly. When I first started, we were not funded very well. Uh, and, and then when we joined the Big Ten, that's when things changed, and that's probably about 20 years now. Uh, joining the Big Ten, we, we had to up the ante in all of the sports, and Penn State came to, came to the table and did do that. So everybody's fully funded, everybody has the max staff that you need to have, and uh, you know that, that gives you a chance but, uh, you know, I think the crowd started growing when we started winning. And, uh, you, know, there's, we, you know, we're kind of fortunate that we, we can fly under the radar of football in the fall. And so many uh, of our alumni come back for the fall and, and then mm -hmm. snowbird it down to Florida or Arizona <laughs> in the right. wintertime. So, so that's really a big part of their schedule is to, is to come. We have a great booster club, and uh, we've been very fortunate to have the support that we have. Yeah, and also with the Big Ten, the advent of the Big Ten Network, there's gender equality as far as coverage, uh, and it's exposing women's athletics, the student athletes in all of the uh, different sports. What, what kind of advantage does that give you? You have the ability to be seen. Yeah, I mean, we had 26 matches li live last year on the Big Ten Network, and then 46 of them were streamed. So to have 72 matches on, plus our involvement. We had three or four extra ones because of our participation in the NCAAs and uh, in the Big Four tournament earlier in the year. So, you know, it's, uh, it allows parents and recruits from around the country to watch their kids play and it, it gives uh, people a chance to see the level of competition that we have in the conference. I think the conference is, is one of the top conferences. We, you know, there's no other conference in the country that's had more schools participate and make it to the Final Four. Right. You know, the Pac-10 has had four teams that have won in the Final Four, and with Nebraska coming in, we'll have only had two, but we've had seven schools that have made it to the Final Four. Interesting uh, comment. It's in your bio in the media guide from uh, former player Christy Cochran. I'll read it uh, verbatim here. When you leave the gym, when you finish your career, every day you uh, leave here, you should feel like you gave 110%. If you put your career in his hands, meaning you, 
you will be great. What does a statement like that mean to you by a former player? And I believe a captain, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. for you. Well, I mean, she was a, she was a special individual when she came in uh, as a youngster, and she's still very special to me now. And I think, you know, from a coaching standpoint, that's what you want. You know, you want players that believe and are going to work hard. And, you know, I've, I've told a lot of people that, you know, people say, when are you going to retire? You've done everything you're going to do. And I'm like, really? I've done everything I'm going to do. Uh, you know, and I think I, I'll get out of it when, because my, my flame blew out a while back. So, you know, it's, it's having the ability to get some light and some warmth from some of these young kids that come in that, that believe and they, you know, they think they can, uh, you know, they'll work hard and they'll do what you're asking them to do. And, you know, Christy was one of our greatest leaders and greatest personalities. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a few kids in your life you would sign to coach them forever. And, and certainly for me, she'd be one of them. Yeah, and uh, the other thing about you, and I think uh, for those that have not been exposed to you really in our first two segments, you are not a coach or an individual that sugarcoats anything for a student athlete coming in or about, you know, what is going to happen to you when you come in here. You've got to make a total commitment, discipline, competitive program, and if that's something you can't live up to, then you've got to go somewhere else, basically. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And... Uh... You know, I think I've always told the administration what I what I think, and I tell the players what I think. And you know, I, I don't I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm sure it's not politically correct at times, and uh, you know, I'm not the spokesman for certain things, but that's okay. You know, I think uh, it's a privilege to be a college athlete. It's not a right. And and when players come into a program, I think if you can be uh, fair and honest and and recruit them in an honest way, and then train them in an honest way, that you know, your chances for success are better than if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not going to lie. I didn't lie to a 17-year-old girl when I was a 17-year-old boy. I'm not going to do it as, a, as an adult. Yeah, as a mentor, 30 seconds or less, um, kids do flock to a discipline program, right? More than not. Some. <laughs> some. There's, there's, there's some that... At least the uh, ones that are coming to you, otherwise it's uh, not going to work. Well, some of them, it, you know, we battle. We battle a little bit. They think <laughs> they're right. And I always tell them, I'm going to be the most stubborn person you've ever dealt with. So if, if you think that's one of your strengths, you're going to lose. So you should go elsewhere. And I, and I don't mind. I mean, a lot, I have my assistants a lot of times over the years in mm -hmm. the other room shaking their head at what I say to recruits. And they're like, I spent a lot of time to get them lined up. And then you, and then you tell them you're not going to kiss their butt. And I go, and, and what's the question about that? You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I think if you, uh, I'm not sure everybody wants the same thing. I think some kids want to go to a program and compete for a national championship and be the best they can be. And I think there's a lot of players that just want to be a college athlete or they just want to experience something. And, you know, every program is different. I have players I know they'd be better for somebody else. And I'm sure there's players at other schools that probably would uh, perform better here at Penn State. All right, we're with Russ Rose. Penn State women's volleyball is our topic, rather, the four-time defending national champs. We'll be right back.